am Bablina Babaloka and I have with me today one of the most watched people on YouTube. Entrepreneur, author, influencer, creator, investor and one of the nicest and most helpful humans I have ever met, Evan Carmichael, who has developed the number one YouTube channel for entrepreneurs with currently 1.4 million subscribers and I'm sure a much bigger number when you're watching this interview in the future and Evan believes in entrepreneurs and mentors entrepreneurs for peak performance and I believe in entrepreneurs and mentor them so I'm very grateful that he's joining me today all the way from Canada to share his knowledge and wisdom so hi Evan and thank you for accepting this interview invitation thank you for the love Pavlina that's a really warm uh, introduction I appreciate it well, I have been watching you on, online for years. I have been a fan. And so just spending this time with you now, it's very valuable with me and I'm sure for everyone who will be watching. And uh, we've met through Louis House, whom I feel the need to thank for the connection on this interview. And you gave me some mentoring on my YouTube channel online, which I, I considered it was extremely valuable and I'm making some big changes now. So I will use this time with you um, as a mentoring session for me right. and for everyone who's listening. <laughs> okay, Great, let's go. Okay, let's go. So how did you get started on YouTube and why YouTube in the first place? Tell us a bit more about your story and your background. So I started on YouTube because I'm a visual learner. Uh, now I started my, I opened my channel November 2008, so it's been almost 10 years of having the channel. Mm. Um, at the time, YouTube wasn't a thing. It wasn't, you know, getting YouTube famous wasn't a thing. It wasn't about getting a million subscribers. You weren't building businesses off of it. I was just a visual learner, and I much prefer to be able to watch something mm -hmm. than to read something. And, and hearing is the worst. For me, auditory is, is the worst. I like to be able to see it. Okay. And so people were asking me questions and I thought it'd be good to be able to make a video to respond instead of me having to type out a response. I could just make a quick video and I could share the advice and hopefully it helps that one person. And if anybody else has that problem, they might find the video too. So it really only started because one, I wanted to share the stories of, of entrepreneurs that I had learned from in a visual mm -hmm. way because mm -hmm. that's how I learned. And two, I wanted to share advice that I had from questions that were coming in in a visual way instead of having to type out an answer. And with time and progress and momentum, uh, it became it became a thing, it became a business. It became something where now we've got eight people on the team helping create the content. Um, so I didn't have massive aspirations at the beginning of where it would go, but just by doing what you love, it turned yeah. into something amazing. It takes you there. But you do have a background. You had a background before that as an entrepreneur. You had built some businesses before, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. uh, I had my first business at 19. Mm -hmm. uh, I sucked at it at the beginning. Uh, I was making $300 a month. I was feeling just like a worthless person because I wasn't getting results. Eventually figured my way through. Um, we can dive into that if you like, but figured my way through, became a venture capitalist, started helping entrepreneurs grow, and I wanted to give back. I think your purpose comes from your pain. And mm -hmm. because I have struggled so much as an entrepreneur, I wanted to give back and help other entrepreneurs out. And so when I started helping entrepreneurs, it was speaking, then it became my website, uh, then it became the YouTube channel, then it became books, and who mm -hmm. knows where we'll go next. But uh, everything is still always focused around trying to help entrepreneurs uh, build their businesses. Amazing. That's why, that's why I love your work and you as a person, because I have this, it started the same with me. My pain was, you know, sucking in business <laughs> and I want to help people. But do you, do you feel, you said you started at 19. Do you feel entrepreneurs are born or they can be made through getting the knowledge and the training? Like somebody needs to have it in their blood to, to succeed in business or can they get the knowledge and then um, create the success? Yeah, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about those kinds of questions because you can't really change who you are. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think there's a lot of ways to win. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of ways to win. You just need to figure out how you are going to win. So as an example, I am not great at sales. Mm -hmm. I don't like sales. I'm not a. I'm not an extroverted person. I'm not. I don't go and talk to people on the airplane. The person next to me. I don't go and go to conferences to meet people and shake hands. Uh, Lewis, who you talked about, is amazing at that. Yeah. Lewis <laughs> loves talking to strangers and going to events and networking. Mm -hmm. Like he is great at that. And I like marketing better. I like 
creating content. I like being a magnet and, and bringing people in to me. And that creates, you know, instead of going to a networking event, I'd rather speak at the networking event and then mm -hmm. people will come up to me afterwards. And so Lewis is winning. I'm winning. We're both doing our own thing. Yeah. I think understanding what you're great at and what you love doing or what you could be great at where you have some natural yeah. skills and abilities, that's what you need to go all in on and, uh, and you can win. Yeah. So I think, I think a lot of people just think, well, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a born entrepreneur. I don't, I'm not like Mark Cuban or Gary Vaynerchuk or whoever you see as like the prototypical entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people who've had successful businesses. Go look at the richest people in the world. There's a lot of people on there who you don't know. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people that who started a business and you have, you've never heard their name before, but they still become great entrepreneurs. They just yeah. done it because they're more introverted. Their, their way. Yes. Do it your way. Don't think you should do it that way or that way. Just figure out what works for you. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Great. So um, you have been featured in Forbes, in the world's uh, top 40 social marketing talents. I've been reading your website, The Inc. in the top 25 uh, social media keynote speakers that you need to see, uh, 100 great leadership speakers. How many years did it take you to achieve all this recognition in your work? And what does it take to get to that world-class level, the top in the world level? What do you think it takes? So how many years? I don't know. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really bad looking backwards. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly uh, when, like, I got my first recognition or award. Um, it was never an ambition. It was never like I can't yeah. wait to be on that list. Mm -hmm. It was never something I had on my like on my bucket list or to dos. I think it's understanding that the quantity leads to the quality. That the mm -hmm. more you do, the better you get. Mm -hmm. If you go back on my YouTube channel. I sucked as a speaker. I was very introverted. I was very shy. I was very nervous, um, very unsure of myself. And by practicing with, with deliberate practice and improving, I got better. And now I've done 5,000 something videos. Not all of them are public, but you better get good at something if you do it 5,000 times. And yeah. I think, I think that's one why it's so important to do the thing you love because making 5,000 videos. If you don't love videos, you're never going to, you're never going to do the work. Yeah. And if you continue to put in the work, if you continue to put in the effort every single day, like I do three videos still a day on my YouTube channel. Wow. <laughs> and you will consistently get results. Get better. And, and Forbes and Inc. and you know, whatever, all of these publications and awards, they found me. It, it's, it's not the only way to win. It's still how I win. Like, yeah. If you were the networking god like Lewis Howes, you might be off. Like, I want to meet the editor of Forbes and I want to get that connection. I want him to feature me in the next edition. For me, I'm just creating tons of content and then I get on people radar discover you. They write to me. Yeah. So, you which I love. <laughs> yeah. I think what, so, the first step is just the self awareness to know what you could be great at. But then the second step is actually doing the work. Yeah three posts a day, right? Three videos a day on YouTube. I'm starting on my Instagram and I, I do six posts a day on Instagram and I go live four times a week on Instagram. And so when you know what you're good at, or at least what you could be good at, what you love and you're developing the skills to get good at, then are you doing the consistent action every day, every week, every month, every year to move uh, closer to your goal and get better at the skill? Yeah. It's the same with everything you do. You want to be a great speaker, so you put yourself on stage many times. You're going to suck the first time and the second and the third time. It's the same. It's not only with video. So um, I, I love how you build your brand because uh, I, I used to hate selling. Now I learned from my mentors to love selling because I'm helping people when I'm selling. And that's what I wanted to do. To, I teach people how to build a brand to, to attract people to you, not to have, have to go after people. And that's the power of building a brand, right? People come to you now and they ask you to work with you and you get on the top lists. Do you agree with that? I mean, when you build a brand, do you get this power that people come to you and you don't need to go after people or clients? Yeah, I think a brand is built around core values. So my mm -hmm. brand is built around my one word of believe. Mm -hmm. So I got it on my shirt, but it's in all the content that I do. It's in hopefully mm -hmm. every interview that I put out. Uh, I believe in people. And so mm -hmm. for anybody who wants more belief in themselves and their ideas and their talent, then they get attracted to the brand that, that I'm creating. Yeah. If somebody's like, believe is stupid, 
-hmm. you know, I can never do anything, you know, the, the negativity, I don't, they don't come to me, they don't like me, they, they yeah. hate my videos. <laughs> Awesome. So, like, go find so, so knowing what your brand is about. And yeah, and the brand, it, I think, has to come from a personal place. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you, it's not the, it's not what does this business stand for, it's what do you stand for as a human being, mm -hmm. and then how do you bring that to your business? Awesome. Okay. And uh, you say that you are solving one of the uh, biggest problems in people's lives. Um, so what is the problem you're working to solve and how do entrepreneurs discover this, uh, this big problem that they're solving? Because they say that in business, if you are able to solve a big problem, you never have to worry about money. Is this true? And how do you find that big problem? Starting with the problem, what is the problem you're solving and how did you find that? So the problem I'm trying to solve is, I think, the biggest problem in the world untapped human potential. Mm -hmm. I think most people are just doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think Michael Jordan is all that special. I just think, I think everybody is, could be a Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. They're just doing the wrong thing. Instead of being the next great basketball player, they are a manager at Starbucks. I think just most people are doing the wrong thing. Uh, and so my mission is to try to help people uncover what that thing is for themselves and then to believe in it more so that they, they push forward to actually go off and achieve. This is this problem will never be fully solved. Like I, mm -hmm. I will die before this mission gets realized. And I think mm -hmm. it's important to have a goal so big that you never realize it. There's always something to strive and push towards. I think for entrepreneurs who want to solve a problem, understand that the rule about making money is the more you help somebody, the more money you're gonna make. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to make a lot of money, help somebody in a huge way. You want to make money quickly, help somebody quickly. You know, you, it's an exchange of value. That's all money is. So if you're providing value to people, then you will get paid to do it. The best way that I found to do it is through your pain. Like your purpose comes from your pain. So mm -hmm. in you going on your journey, what were some of the pains that you had to overcome that mm -hmm. you figured out? And then there's lots of people who are still going through that that you can help. Whether that's through a product or whether that's through a service or whether that's by creating content, you can help solve that problem. And if you are actually solving that problem, then you will get paid to do it. And the more you solve the problem, the more value you bring, the more you're gonna get paid. So that, that's talking in kind of generic terms, but if you can think about the pain that you had and then how did you overcome it, what were the steps? So mm -hmm. for example, you know, if you had depression and you got through it through meditation, a specific kind of meditation, mm -hmm. and this is a thing that helped you, mm -hmm. then that could be a course that mm -hmm. you sell. Because there's lots of people who have depression as well and this formula worked for you now you want to teach it to other people it's a it's a purpose-filled business and that you know that you are helping save lives of people who are depressed and they want access to you and so whether mm -hmm. you're doing you know free YouTube videos on it but then you have these retreats or workshops or whether you're selling an e-course you write a book on it like you're teaching the method that you use to get out of that pain for all the people who are in that pain right now your purpose comes from your pain, <laughs> right? Great. Um, so let's go to the, to the big topic of this interview. How, how do you become the number one channel on YouTube in your niche? How did you become? Um, and for someone who is just starting out, um, how do they stand out from all the noise and build this big brand on YouTube and stand out? So I think YouTube is, is the best place to be long term because mm -hmm. the content lives forever. I mm -hmm. made videos five years ago and people are still watching it where on an Instagram video or Facebook video, you're not watching something from you know, yesterday, let alone mm -hmm. a month ago or five exactly. years ago. Yeah. And so YouTube takes a little bit more work and time to build up momentum. But I mm -hmm. think it's ultimately if you're, if you're in it for the long run and you want to really build a brand, YouTube is the best spot to be. Uh, it starts off by recognizing that there's always room for quality at the top. There's, if you are creating something, you have a unique message, a unique way of doing things, there's always room for quality if, the, if your thing works. People ask, is it, is it oversaturated? Is it too late to get started? Yeah. Not, not if you're good. Like, not mm -hmm. if you have something that works. There's yeah. always room for more people mm -hmm. if it's good, right? So the key then to winning is, like, what can you be great at? It's... It's your story, your message. I think a lot of people are trying to be too professional mm -hmm. and they blend and they become vanilla and they look like everybody else. Yeah. So if you just try to copy Gary Vee or me or Lewis or 
Grant or Marie or like whoever else is in my in the entrepreneur kind of space, mm -hmm. the best you're gonna be is a junior version of that. Yeah. Where what you just find your own your own spin, your own take on it. What does that look like? So as an example, like doing the top tens was something that I didn't want to have to create the top ten rules videos. I wanted to learn from these people like Elon Musk and Oprah Winfrey and these people. But I didn't want to have to do the work to put it together. Mm -hmm. But nobody else was doing that at the time. And so I said, okay, typical entrepreneur, you know, there's a problem, I'm going to solve it. And hopefully other people will like it as well. And so figuring out your truth, your story is the answer. A lot of times people are too afraid to, to tell their story and to say mm -hmm. what worked for them. They're worried about being judged. Mm -hmm. uh, they're worried about something not working out. But like that is the only path. That is the only path through because if you are safe and boring and corporate and professional all the time, nobody's going to connect with you. Right. I love it. So find your story, find your own spin. But are there any like uh, tips for getting to the first 10K, 100K, 1 million followers, maybe two, three tips that if somebody has that unique thing, then they need to do more you know, consistently? Yeah. So I would start with identifying what is the theme mm -hmm. of your channel. Mm -hmm. What is the what's the core value? So for me, it's believe. Mm -hmm. What's the one word? What's the core value of your channel that I want people to feel belief in themselves out of every piece of content on my channel? Mm -hmm. That's the uniting theme. Whether I'm doing a top ten or an espresso or a mentor me, all sorts of different series. Believe is the current theme theme through everything. Mm -hmm. And so, what is the theme of your channel? What is the what is the emotion that you want people to get by watching your video? Mm -hmm. If you can't make people feel, then they will not subscribe to your channel. If all okay. you're doing is, here are the three tips to do X, Y, Z, but they're not feeling anything, they'll, great, thank you for the tips. And this is a lot of, this is a big problem with a lot of how-to channels, how mm -hmm. to unclog your toilet. Do this. Great, I solved my problem and I'm out and I never come and sub I don't want to subscribe to your channel. I just mm -hmm. want to solve that one problem. Okay. But if you make people feel, they're more likely to subscribe because they want that feeling again. Mm. And so what is the feeling? Like if you ask yourself, what is the feeling that I want people to get out of every video that they watch on my channel, then design around that. Two, then start creating. Like you want to get to daily content on any platform. YouTube is the hardest because of how long a video is. Mm -hmm. But you want to have a plan to get to daily. You may not be able to do that yet. Maybe you're doing it once a week. But you want to have a plan to get to daily eventually. Okay. The quantity leads to the quality. Like if you're doing one video a month, that means you're doing 12 videos a year. Like mm -hmm. Not only will you not build momentum and traction, you just won't get good. Mm -hmm. If you only are practicing something 12 times a year, anything, you're not gonna become world-class at it. Mm -hmm. You need more practice. Like everything else you ever learned ever, you got it by practicing. And so you need to be putting out a lot of content. I would, I would not focus as much on the editing unless you are an editor mm -hmm. so for my kind of videos like talking head if you're an expert if you want to be a speaker or a thought leader people get so caught up in the gear and the editing the editing yeah. doesn't matter like i would much rather you have just get your cell phone and film you talking for five minutes ten minutes with with zero edits and just post that if that means that you can do a daily video instead of one every two weeks because people are watching for the message mm -hmm. more than they're watching for what kind of camera you're using. I think people get too caught up in the gear. Um, and then three, I would just say, uh, find the process that you really enjoy doing and not getting so caught up in the numbers. Uh, it's easy to look at a video and say, well, I only got 100 views and didn't get any comments and feel like you suck. Like, expect to suck. Expect nobody to pay attention at the beginning. Mm -hmm. With the repetition, with the volume, with the consistency, with the follow through, people will watch and people will then go back on your old videos and every chance that you create a video is another at bat, is another opportunity for somebody to find you and hopefully you're getting better each time you do it as well. And I think people just give up too early. They, give, yeah. they quit because they don't hit their ten, first 10,000 after three months and they think, wow, this is never going to work out. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the trend today. And my next question was, how do you deal with building a, a YouTube channel into a business, especially in the beginning when you, you don't have budget for a team and uh, you have a few hours? Uh, you, you answered it, uh, you said, you know, do videos with your phone, but can you compete with these big channels if you don't have like good quality productions? And how do you overcome these limitations of no team, no money um, and compete with the big guys? 
already, if that's your mindset, you've lost. Okay. Right? Like, I, I shouldn't even be in bit. My channel shouldn't even exist. Like, mm. CNN should be doing my channel or, or some huge media company should be doing my channel. Mm. If I thought I can never compete with Oprah or Tony Robbins or whoever, then I wouldn't even get started. Mm -hmm. the, the, the way to think about that is instead of saying, well, how am I going to compete with these guys, is to ask the same question but change the tone. Instead mm. of how am I going to compete with these guys, it's how am I going to compete with these guys? Mm. The difference is there's possibility, there's yeah. hope instead of complaining mm -hmm. and coming from a negative spot. Mm -hmm. um, so it still will just come down to are you are you good at what you're doing? Mm -hmm. uh, find the one thing that is great about you. So for me, I have 1.5 million subscribers on my channel almost. When mm. I go on vacation, I film from my phone. Mm. I, st I still have videos on my channel filming like this. Mm -hmm. I like it. I, I like it. I like mm -hmm. now telling my, my camera guy comes into my studio, films on like this $50,000 red dragon cam or something, and he thinks it's all about the gear. I love when I walk down the street and I'm filming a video off of my phone just to show everybody that it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? I have respect for the gear, but too many people are, are, are held to it, and you feel like you can't get going. If yeah. you are... The only caveat is if you are an editor, then you yeah. need, if you're a photographer, you have to have beautiful pictures, Yeah. right? Like that's your craft. Yeah. But if you're talking about giving branding advice as an example, right? doesn't matter what your editing is like. I want the advice. Mm -hmm. I want to feel yeah. moved by your content. If you're a thought leader or a speaker, it's, it's all about you. And mm -hmm. that sucks because it's... You realize I'm the only one to blame. I can't blame not having enough money and resources, but it's also great because now you're in charge. Mm -hmm. You're in control. Somebody messaged me today and it's like, you deserve to have more than 1.4 million subscribers <laughs> on your channel. You should have 10 million. I'm like, no, I don't. I don't deserve that. I deserve exactly everything that I have. Mm -hmm. I deserve the 1.4. Like I put in a ton of work yeah. to get the 1.4, but... But I'm not good enough to be a 10. The content's mm. not good. Everything needs to get better. I need to get better. The content needs to get better. My team needs to get better. Everything needs to get better. I deserve everything that I have in my business and in mm. my life. It's all my fault. It's all my responsibility. It's about self-awareness. <laughs> yeah, and I need to get better to get there. Exactly. So your, uh, you know, your results reflect the amount of work you put in and the efforts. I'm thinking that five years ago, I interviewed Gary V before I started blogging and he said, do content. And I waited for a year to do it because I wanted to do it perfect. And now today you're teaching me the how to do great content because he said, do content. But there is a how that you do great content that is in this video today for everyone who will watch it. And I'm learning a lot from you right now. Um, coming towards the end, a couple of last questions. Have you had periods of time in your business when you felt you put in a lot of work, many hours consistently over a long period, but you didn't have results and you, you were stuck and you know things were not moving forward according to your efforts. And if you did, how did you overcome these moments? If you did have these periods where you put so much work so, in. So everybody does. Mm -hmm. It's part of everybody's success journey. Uh, you need to tie your self-worth to the effort and not the result. Mm -hmm. If you won a race against three-year-olds, you're not going to feel great about yourself, mm -hmm. right? It's like it's easy to win a race against three-year-olds. Mm -hmm. So it's not the winning that you should tie your self-respect to. It's the effort. It's the getting up every day and doing the thing. When you get up and do the thing when it's hard, that's what you want to train yourself to, to love yourself for as opposed to I only love myself and feel great about myself when somebody else comes and gives me a life. Gives me the, yeah. Yeah. Right. You're powerful when you're here now every day and you keep going and you don't the lose effort. your <laughs> yeah. tie yourself or to your effort. Like yeah. when, when things are hard, that's when I get excited. Like mm. I've, I've trained myself when it's harder, I get excited. Okay. I tell myself it's the best. Whenever mm. there's something negative that happens, this is the best. Mm. And that's how I get my self-respect that when it's difficult to show up and do the work, it's easy when it's easy. It's easy to show up when, everything's been lined up and perfect for you. Mm -hmm. It's easy when you've got the camera crew and the editor and everything yeah. else. Yeah. That's easy. Mm -hmm. When it's hard that it's the best, that's, that's awesome. So I've, I've shifted myself where anytime there's a negativity, where anytime there's a problem or when it's difficult, it's like this is the best. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, I want to talk about your books before we go. Uh, you wrote two books, The One Word and The Top 10 Rules for Success that everyone yeah. can find on Amazon. 
Um, so what is the one word? And what is that powerful secret for creating a business and life that matters? Maybe a, like a yeah. short tip so for somebody who wants to get the book. So your one word is your most important core value. We talked about it at the mm. kind of top of this interview mm -hmm. too. I think if you understand who you are, you understand what your core value is, then if, in a business sense, if you want to bring that to your content, then you want, well, like, what do you want people to feel every time they watch your video? Okay. For me, it's belief. And that's come, that's not a marketing thing. It's, it's from my core, it's from my heart. And so then I attract people who love the belief message. I attract a team who loves belief. Hmm. I attract suppliers, brands, partners, book deals, everybody who loves the belief message because it's super clear. Hmm. So when you have your one word acts as your, your compass, your roadmap to help you make better decisions and to, to attract an army of people who want to help you. So the book kind of guides people through how to figure out their one word, then how to make money from it, and then how to build a big business off of it too. Great. And it's not only for YouTube, it's for all social media, Instagram, everywhere. You need to bring out a feeling uh, with your work. Uh, and for decades, you researched the deepest wisdom from hundreds of elite entrepreneurs and celebrities that you have on your channel as well. And you distilled the top 10 rules of success in a book. So if you would leave us with the top three rules of success that you love, what would they be? Uh, I think the most common one is follow your passion. Do the mm -hmm. thing that you love doing. You have to enjoy the work and not just the results. The results are important. Making money is important. Even for a charity, making money is important. It just can't be number one. There has to be something above number one, uh, above making money that is number one. Two, I would say uh, ignoring the little man. Uh, the little man or the haters, the people, mm -hmm. the non-believers, the people who tell you that your idea is stupid. Uh, too many times, I think people are afraid of not just failing, but they're afraid of failing in front of other people. And if you want to go off and do something big, it means that you will also have some people who don't like what you're doing. And it has nothing to do with you. It's their own insecurities and their own limiting beliefs. But if you have nobody who hates what you're doing, it means you don't stand for anything important. So mm. you have to, you have to start to develop that thicker skin or at least have empathy for the people who are who are hating against what you're trying to do and then three you'd say believe believe is a yeah. common message across every person who's had success they believed in themselves they believed that it would work out and they kept going even when it didn't make logical practical sense great thank you so much for your time i have more questions but we need to do this again <laughs> maybe live Round at the two. seminar i can ask you a lot of questions and the audience can ask you since we do seminars. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, and I do hope that we do meet in person because I do the live events and, you know, and we connect more. And uh, I'm sure your work will grow and grow and uh, you will always be inspiration uh, with your work. So thank you very much for the tips and advice. I have a lot to implement and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks a lot, Pavlina. It's been fun. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.